Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I got a really cool video about how you can do data-driven scheduling even easier. So data-driven scheduling and data sets came out in Airflow recently, and they're a great way to schedule your DAGs based on, hey, if a data set has arrived, then I want to kick off this DAG that consumes that data set, does some transformations, whatever. Now, that gets you away from the rigidities of time-based scheduling and makes your pipelines a lot less brittle, but it's kind of a hassle to set up out of the box. You have to uh, declare the data set in the source task, then you need to declare it again in the file of that, of that source task in the DAG file. Then you have to declare it again in the DAG you want to recognize it as an input. Now, the Astro SDK makes this whole process a lot easier. So the Astro SDK is basically just a development toolkit that allows you to write you know, Python and SQL without any of the traditional boilerplate code. And part of that boilerplate code that's removed is the need to actually manually define your data sets. With the SDK, you can just say, hey, I want this table to be an output, and it'll automatically create a data set object for it. So it eliminates all the extra lines and all the extra busy work of actually setting that process up. So what I'm going to show you today is how you can create a data-driven workflow using those data sets. Um, and so this means that you can just directly say, hey, I want whenever this data set is created, then use that as a scheduling parameter for a downstream task without needing to declare it four different times. Um, so I'll use Snowflake as the example for this, but you can really use any uh, database for this. The main concepts you're going to want to pay attention to are just the fact that, hey, this is how a data set is defined as an output and then used as a trigger for a downstream task. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're doing, as with every single DAG in the world is import ourselves some libraries. So we're going to import OS, date time, just some boilerplate ones, then pandas, so we can do some transformations on our data as Python, uh, the DAG decorator, just for defining our DAG, Astro files, this is what's going to allow us to read a file as an input, as a data set, and then Astro SQL. So these are the SDK tasks that will allow us to just load file and transform it without needing to define the extra boilerplate code that traditionally would be involved here. Then finally, you have an Astro SQL table, and this is actually what takes the place of the data set object within the Astro SDK. You can use tables now, so you take an output of a table and then consume it from another task. So now that we've got the, all the steps ready to go, let's blast off and get through this deck. So you're going to also need to define a Snowflake connection and an AWS connection, so I'll be using S3 and Snowflake here. Um, so just make sure you have access to those accounts. Again, you can also just use your local file system in the place of S3. And that's the beautiful part of the Astro SDK is it doesn't matter that you are using an S3 instead of a local file system. The load file can take any input. So any place where that data is being stored, whether it's S3, Snowflake, Google Cloud Bucket, um, and then load it into any database. So this could, this, this case it could be Snowflake, but it could be Postgres, it could be Redshift, it can be literally any database. And all you're doing is just input putting those variables into the load file function and it'll take care of the rest. So now before we actually create our DAG, we're also gonna define one more function, which is gonna be the transform function. So here we are using that Astro SDK, SDK function, which is transform. And so what this does, we'll take two inputs um, and this can be more than two inputs. I'm just only using two inputs here, which are gonna be the two data sets of homes information um, that we're using here. So here we're just combining these two data sets um, using the union operation and just select all from them. Um, and this will make a little more sense when we actually create the DAG, which we'll do right now. So here we have a pretty standard DAG definition, just start date, schedule interval, catch up set to false and setting our markdown doc. And we're gonna call this example SDK datasets. And so that's what we're doing here. And now let's start using the load file function to load our data. So here in the load file function, uh, this is that Astro SDK function I talked about. We are defining just an input path. So this file here, file path, my S3 path, using my AWS connection ID. So if you were just using a local machine, you just use a local path. Um, I'm using AWS, so I'll be adding AWS connection ID so it knows where to find it. Then your output table, and this is where it's creating the data set in the table. Um, so now we have a data set called homes1 uh, in Snowflake. So now we can schedule further tasks just by referencing this table of homes1. And this eliminates the need to actually define the data set externally from the task. It is done automatically through this load file and then output table function. But really it's through this table right here, which is taking the uh, end destination of this file and then initializing it within Airflow as an object. Um, so if exists, replace, just 
So you might be running this DAG over and over again as examples. Um, so we'll just leave it as to replace um, if I actually do run it again. Um, and then we're going to do something very similar for our second data set. Now, where it all comes together is in this extract data file, so or task. So here, we're just taking Holmes data, which is just the name of these two tasks, and reading them in as inputs for this function we defined here. So you'll notice, because we already defined the output as a table, we don't need to do any other funny business to actually load this data uh, from Snowflake into this transform task. So it just reads it in super easily, and then will give us an output table uh, directly into Snowflake as well. Uh, so this is really the power of the Astro SDK, is we can have data set driven scheduling, but we can do it in an organic way, where it's just, hey, I created a task to load a file, now I just wanna reference that file that I loaded, which I'm just taking the name of that task and putting it into this argument, and boom, now it's loading that file into, into this task. And so I can run transformations on it. Um, I could actually also use Python here and a pandas data frame to transform it, um, but really just opens up a world of possibilities uh, by reducing the complexity of data sets and just making them super simple so that you don't have to worry about the complexity of just doing one data set. You can have a full workflow that has all your different data sets spinning off different activities, connecting to each other um, in a dynamic, but also managed way. Um, so really just helps make your uh, pipelines less brittle, as well as makes the flow of data through them a lot more critical and readable uh, within the Airflow UI. So, you know, everything's driven off of your data. And so we shouldn't be bound to time-based scheduling. We should be worshiping the data um, and making sure that it drives everything within our pipelines. So now you have an output data set, um, everything's combined. And so that's the end of the DAG, but let's go into the Airflow UI and take a look at what this looks like in practice. So here in the Airflow UI, we have our example SDK data sets and let's run it, see what it looks like. Um, and in the interest of not making you wait to watch this run through, but as proof that it will run, I'll kind of show you what's happening in the graph view from my prior runs. So here, it's again, just loading that file um, from S3 into Snowflake, and then extract data is just combining those two files um, directly within Snowflake. So you can use all of your systems for what they're best at. Um, and you can also have data actually drive the schedule of this. Um, so what you can extend this further is by just taking, hey, using that table so this um, at table you could bring this and just copy and paste it into the schedule of a particular dag and then whenever this data is completed or this data set is produced it'll trigger that downstream dag so i really wanted to make this video as kind of a starting point and then you can kind of take this wherever you want it to you know this is a simple example but it can bring about a wealth of change and complexity within your data pipelines um, and it's also it's snowflake season so I had to do something about snowflake um, and that's really all I have for you today. Um, I hope you learned something. I know I did setting it up. If you have an idea for a video, hit me at my email, drop a comment if you liked it or if you didn't, and there's something you want me to improve. And above all, have a good one. Data guy out.